is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this twisted leaf pendant dangly necklace. This is with the Golden Harvest treasure bag. However, um, I do have a bunch of these pendants left. I do not have any of these particular beads, but I do have different pearls. You can use whatever you have in your stash if you would like to, to replace them with. They're not that hard to replace. So, um, I will list these if you want some, and if not, just use something you have in your stash. This is a techniques video, so you could do something similar with some similar type of components. So this is what we're making today and it turns out really pretty and it dangles really nice these just cluster really pretty and um, the little components hang really pretty on the front I'll put this on a neck model and take a picture of it for the thumbnail so you can see what it looks like but it's a very simple process we're also going to make a very simple pair of earrings to go with it as you can see and they're really pretty so Let's go ahead and look at the material list and see what we need to get started. Okay, for this project, we will be using some of the things found in the Golden Harvest treasure bag. We're going to be using this strand of six millimeter round. These are imitation opalite and they're green and um, red. I have a white one almost. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to be using this and we'll be using pretty much the whole strand. Then we're going to use these twisted leaf pendants that are in the treasure bag. And I have a bunch of these, so I'll list them if you'd like. I do not have a bunch of these, but you could use something else, a pearl, anything. Um, these, you have 10 of them. We're going to be using nine of them. And then I'm going to add some seed beads to this. Now, if you want to keep it a metal tone that I'm using the nickel plate. If you want to warm it up a little bit and make it more fall uh, feeling, then you could use a bronze or a gold or something like that in your seed bead and just change your findings to that particular color. I am going to use the toggle that came in the bag, so I've decided to go ahead and use some nickel color tohos. So this is an Edo Toho nickel. Then I have the toggle from the bag. I'm going to be using three six millimeter round jump rings and um, about nine, I think nine of these eight millimeter or 10 millimeter round. Let me measure just real quick because I should have done that, but I didn't. So these are eight millimeter round. And then I'm going to be using some head pins and you'll need nine of them. I have these ball head pins that I'm going to use. You can use whatever type of head pin you would like. And I have two eye pins, two ear wires, and you will need two of um, these crimp beads. So I'm using a size two and this is beetle on and I'm going to use the hematite color or the gunmetal color simply because it will go better than the bright silver with my nickel plate tohos. I am also going to be using some soft flex. This is medium. You can use whatever beading wire you have, it doesn't truly matter, but this is the medium soft flex and you can see the diameter here is 0 0.019 inch or 0.48 millimeter. That's what I'm going to be using to string my beads on. Of course, you're going to need some round nose pliers, some flat nose pliers, and some chain nose pliers, and a wire cutter. Let me back off here and we're going to go ahead and get started. You'll also need a crimping tool. So I'm going to just use my regular crimping tool here. Grab that and let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay, to begin this project, we're going to make several components to put onto the necklace as we string it. So we're going to begin by make, making nine leaf components and all we have to do is put an eight millimeter jump ring on it. So we're going to grab the jump ring and one half of our plier and make sure that the opening is here in the center. I'm holding on to half of it. I'm going to grab another plier, 
grab the other half of it and just crank it open and crank it open pretty wide. And then I'm just going to drop it on to the leaf or drop the leaf onto it actually. And then I'm going to close that jump ring. You'll do that nine times. Then we're going to make nine components <clears throat> with a head pin. So I have this little ball head pin. You could use a regular straight head pin, you know, with a nail type bottom if you'd like, doesn't matter. You can eliminate the jump the um seed bead if you'd like. I'm going to put on a bead and then a seed bead. Then I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers and just above that seed bead I'm going to bend this wire over in a 90 degree angle. Then I'm going to cut it down to about a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to place them towards the end of this wire here. And I'm going to begin to turn. I'm going to turn as far as I can. Oops. And then I'm going to turn my plier over. So I have it in here. I'm going to turn it over and continue to turn until I have a nice loop like this. Now I'll show you that again with the eye pin because I know I slipped on the wire there. So we're going to, for this component, we're going to make nine like this with the eye pin, with the head pin. Now with the eye pin, which has a loop on one side, you're going to pick up an 8 seed bead, a six millimeter round, an 8 seed bead, and drop it on. And then we're going to Grab just above the top seed bead here, and we are going to do a 90 degree angle, just like we did before. This one's pretty short, but I'm still going to cut it down some, so it's about a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to grab the wire in my plier so that it's flush towards the back here, and I'm going to begin to turn. I'm going to turn as far as I can. Then I'm going to take my plier out, I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to put it back in towards the front of the loop and continue to turn. Just like that. You are going to make two with the eye pins just like this. So once you have made your components, you'll have nine six millimeter rounds with an 8 seed bead on head pins. And then you will have two on eye pins and you will have nine of your leaf pendants on jump rings. Then we are going to grab three of our leaves and three six millimeter round jump rings. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab one of our leaves and we're going to find the opening in the jump ring. Sometimes you have to turn it a little and mess with it until you can find it. And there's my opening right there. I am going to grab a hold of one side and then the other. When you're making these, you can go ahead and drop one of your components on if you make your components first. But I made mine all separate, so um, I made these after I'd made these. so. I am going to open it and then I am going to drop onto it one of these eye pin components. Now when I drop this on, I want to make sure that it's on the side that has the front of the leaf, the scoop of the leaf, so that it drops into the scoop of the leaf. If you drop it on the back side, it won't drop into the nice scoop and you won't see the pretty front side here. So you want it to be in the front of the pendant. And then you're just going to grab a hold of your jump ring and then drop a six millimeter jump ring on and then close it. Then we're going to go ahead and open another six millimeter jump ring, find the center, crank it open, Scoop up the six millimeter jump ring you just put onto the eight millimeter jump ring on your pendant. Oh yeah, come on. <laughs> and close that six millimeter jump ring. So now you have two six millimeter jump rings 
on an eight millimeter jump ring that's on your component. Just like that. Then you're going to grab another leaf. Find where the opening is. Open it up. Find the front of your component or your leaf and drop the eye pin component with the six millimeter round bead onto it so that it hangs in the scoop of the leaf. Then you're going to pick up your, per your previous, actually it might be easier to leave it laying down. You're going to scoop that second six millimeter jump ring up with your eight millimeter jump ring on your component, just like this and close it. Then we're going to lay it back out. And now we're going to make another component and put it on this six millimeter jump ring on this side of the jump ring. So we're going to grab a leaf component, open it up, put this one on, and then we're going to make sure we scoop it so that it's facing forward, the pendant that is, and scoop it onto that jump ring, that third jump ring, and then close it. Now, you have to find the third jump ring here. So let's see, it's kind of hard to do. So there it is. So there's the third jump ring right there. I've got it positioned up on top here. And then we're going to start stringing our piece. So we're going to, I have cut about a 22 inch piece of medium soft flex beading wire and I'm going to start by picking up two 8 seed beads and I'm just going to drop it to the center and then I'm going to go through that third jump ring there that I've had positioned up and I'm just going to drop it down. Now everything's going to get messed up, it's not going to look quite right and we may have to if we find that our, our little components, these look like they're going to hang just fine but if they don't you can always reposition your leaves on the 8 um, on the eight millimeter jump rings but this looks like it's going to scoop up just fine. Now I have my two 8 seed beads in the center of my wire and my little um, leaf component thing I made right next to it so you can see. Now I'm going to start stringing it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put let's see I've got two eightos on there I'm going to put on three of my six millimeter rounds and drop it down and then I'm going to put three of my six millimeter rounds on the other side so I'll just pick up three of them and drop it down and then I'm going to pick up an 8 seed bead on either side and I'm going to pick up one of my leaf beads and make sure that you put it on the wire so that the front is forward so I'll slide it on like this Just drop it down. Then I'll pick up three more six millimeter round. Just scoot it all together. You can center your wire if you start to find that you have way too much on one side. You can center it a little bit so that you know when you finish everything's pretty well centered. You can center it several times through the entire process here. And then pick up an 8 seed bead and drop a leaf on. Make sure I put my leaf on the right side. 
And you know what? Before I drop this leaf on, sorry guys, we're going to backtrack just a little. Before I drop this leaf on, I am going to open that jump ring. So it would be nice to have them with your components, your these little components already on your leaf beads, but I didn't do it that way. So you may want to, when you're putting, make these first, then when you're putting your eight millimeter jump rings on your leaves, just drop them on. So you don't have to do this in steps. So I've got this one, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do another one, because I'm going to show you the pattern I'm going to do on one side, and then we'll go off camera, and do the pattern on the other side, and come back and look at it. So now I have to drop another one on here. Okay, now I'm ready. So now I can pick up three of my six millimeter round beads. Like that. Actually, <laughs> sorry guys. I'm going to put on my leaf first over that 80 seed bead. Oh, how ridiculous. I am so sorry. <laughs> ah, the basics. The basics are killing me. Okay, I'm going to drop this one on. And then make sure that it's positioned correctly. And then I'm going to pick up six or three six millimeter rounds. And then I'm going to pick up an 80 seed bead and my next component. So you're going to have seven components on your necklace. We made nine, two will be reserved for the earrings. So we're going to drop this down. And then I am going to put my two ends together here and center this. and then I'm going to start building up the top of the necklace. So this is my center here. You are going to do the same thing on this side. Once you have your two leaf beads on, then you're going to start doing um, three of your six millimeter rounds and three 80 seed beads until you get to the length that you want. Now, these two are stuck together, so what I do if I find some that are stuck together, because these are basically painted, um, I'll take it off here. I will use my flesh cutters and just very gently put it in between and pop it off. It's not like you're cutting it, it just pops right off. Then I'm going to pick up three and then three 11 O seed beads. And I'm going to repeat that until I get to the length I want. So this is what I have so far. Let me clean up my mess here. I'm going to center it and show you what I have. And then I'm going to come back and show you the entire um, pattern that I'm going to do. So you will have two on this side, two on this side of your leaves beyond the center piece. And then you're going to put three six millimeter rounds with an 80 seed bead on this side with your leaves on top of the eightos, and then you're going to start doing three six millimeter rounds, three seed beads, three six millimeter rounds, three seed beads, until you have, I've already strung one, so let me grab it for you and show you what it looks like. Put this aside, and it looks like it's I'm getting it guys, my seed beads fell off the end here, so I'm trying to fix it. Okay, so this is what I have. Let me lay it out so you can see. And when this is, lay is standing up, it's really pretty. You can hold it up and see just how pretty it is. Let me get this one on the right side here. And I'm going to push it all together. And let you see what I've done. 
So I have strung this so it's going to be about an 18 inch necklace, I believe. I'll put it, I'll measure it in a minute. But what I have done is after my last leaf bead, I put on my three six millimeter rounds and then three eight oh seed beads. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of the three six millimeter round beads with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of the eight, eight O seed beads. I want to call them eight millimeter rounds. Don't ask me why. So you want to do this side completely and then do this side to match it exactly. And this is what you should end up with. I'm going to measure it so we can see exactly how long it is. And then we are going to go ahead and put on our clasping. Let me just get some of this stuff out of the way and I will get my bead board. Okay, so let me back up a little bit here. I'm going to place my centerpiece on the zero on the outer edge. This is how you'll measure it in inches on the outer edge here. And it's not quite 18 inches. So, because I have it to the nine on either side, let me see. Yeah, it's real close to 18 inches. So when I put my clasping on, I'm going to get probably um, a 19 inch necklace. So that'll be fine. And you can measure it that way to get the size necklace you would like. A small necklace is 16 inches. A medium necklace is 18 inches. A large necklace is 20 inches. And then we are going to finish the ends here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both of these ends together and I'm going to make sure everything is centered by putting these two ends together here. Then I'm going to clip off one end so that I don't drop it off, drop the beads off as I do this. Then I'll work on this side. And I need a couple of my crimp tubes, so I'm going to get two crimp tubes out. And I need my crimping tool. That's a mighty crimper. I don't want a mighty crimper. I want a regular crimper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop up one of my crimp tubes. Just like this. Then I'm going to put on my clasp. Then we're going to get closer. You're going to take the excess of your wire here. We've cut 22 inches, so that's plenty to leave us on either end here. And we're just going to slide it through all of these beads. We're going to go through the crimp bead, we're going to go through the three eight o's, and we're going to go through the first six millimeter round. And we're going to pull this down completely tight so that there's no movement, anything. You get it as tight as you can right here. Then we're going to cut this wire right at the bottom of this bead. Then we're going to gently pull a little bit of slack up here so that we have movement with our clasping. And we drag that excess wire up into that bead. So you just very lightly adjust it up like this. Now, the way we're doing this, by going through the beads, it helps hold everything together so we can cut our wire off already and have it inside the bead. Now, we're going to pick up our crimping tool and in the second divot closest to the handle, we're going to place our crimping tool on this crimp tube. And you want to place it to where the wires are parallel in it next to each other. So the wires running through the crimp tube are right next to each other. You imagine the little divot that's in the middle of the divot that you're in on your plier is between those two beads and you squeeze or between the um, the two wires. So this is what I mean. 
I have made sure that my two wires were next to each other. I placed this divot, the second divot, and then if you look on this side, you'll see it has a little, like, peak. I have placed that peak between the two wires. I imagine where they are and place that peak between and squeeze. And then you end up with a really nice crimp like this. And you've hidden your wire in the bead. Now we go into the first divot, which is just round on the crimp tube. Place your crimp tube in sideways and then squeeze. Now you have secured that crimp tube. Now we're going to go to the other side and we have to make sure we don't have any slack in this when we do this because we want all these beads on the bottom to stay nice and secure on top of the seed beads. So you have to pull all the slack out and then you have to grab your crimp tube and I've lost a seed bead. Let me get another one. And I'm going to do this without as much direction. So you can just see it happening here. So I put on my crimp tube on top of those Edo seed beads. I'm dropping down my clasp. I'm going to go back through the crimp and the three Edo's and the first six millimeter round. Now on this side, I want to retain my tension, so I'm going to hold on to the side of the loop that is secure. So this side moves, this side does not. So I want to hold on to the side that doesn't move and drag this down and bring it down as tightly as I can, just like this. That will ensure you keep your tension on the entire necklace. I'm going to cut this wire and then I'm going to adjust by pushing down on that crimp tube just a little bit, give myself some slack, draw the excess wire into the bead here, place my crimp tube in the second divot, imagining where they split apart, and try to position, squeeze, and then place it on sideways in the first divot and squeeze again. Whoops, I missed. Let me squeeze again. It wants to twist, and I don't want it to twist. There we go. It doesn't really care what I want, evidently. All right, so now, This necklace has become kind of a comedy show, but this is what it looks like. And I'll put it on a neck uh, model so you can see it, but it hangs so pretty. These hang kind of in a little cluster with the little bead dangles, and these hang just perfect. It, it looks really pretty. And then we are going to make an earring real quick. So let me move this aside. So you have your component like this one on your eye pin. We're going to make one that looks like this. So you need an eight millimeter jump ring and you, actually you don't, you should have your leaf already on the jump ring because we made nine of them. So you should just grab your jump ring leaf combination here and your component that has both loops one on either side, and then you're going to need an ear wire, and you're going to need one of your components on the eye pin. So the first thing we're going to do, unless you've already put your eye pin components onto your eight millimeter jump rings, you're going to open the eight millimeter jump ring. Let's get in closer, and let's drop on the component. And then let's drop on this double component too. I'm going to drop it on the other side here. And I'm going to close it. Then I'm going to open my ear wire, find the side that is open, 
and crank it open just like you do a jump ring. Grab the double-ended component here and toss it on making sure that the front of your leaf is going to be facing out so the big part of your curve here should be towards the same side as this one as your pendant and then close it. Sorry, I'm having a hard time communicating today. I don't even know why. It's just not coming out right and everything's being weird. So anyway, those are your earrings. They're really cute. And then here is your necklace. Very fast moving, very pretty little fall project. It turned out really nice. Oh, come on, you. Get in camera. There we go. So, I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you did, please consider subscribing and giving me a little thumbs up and um, hitting that notification bell. It really helps my channel, and I really do appreciate it. I hope you liked this one. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.